Welcome to lecture 20 in this series of lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We've been considering the possibility of gauge R&R &R for go, no-go data and we're ready to think about how one might take data and estimate what we've decided to call sigma squared R and R, sigma squared repeatability, and sigma squared reproducibility when all one has are go, no-go calls on a, a single part. Still thinking of a single fixed part, we're going to use p hat sub j to stand for the fraction of calls uh, that operator make operator j makes that are non-conforming calls. Uh, that's an estimate of operator j's probability of making a non-conforming call. And if one then thinks about averaging those over j operators to get an average p hat, uh, it makes sense that that quantity should average to the population average of uh, the P's. That is, the P hat bar uh, is an estimate of the, of the parameter pi that describes how P's vary operator to operator. In addition to that, remembering that pi times 1 minus pi is what we were going to call sigma squared R and R in this context. Uh, it's then plausible that instead of pi times 1 minus pi, one takes the database p hat bar times 1 minus p hat bar and uses that as an estimate of sigma squared R and R. Further, since simply taking operator J's fraction of non-conforming calls, P hat J, and multiplying by 1 minus P hat J, uh, that's a way to estimate operator J's per call variability uh, of 0, 1, or conforming, non-conforming calls. Uh, that is, that's an estimate of pj times 1 minus pj. And if one then thinks about averaging these across all j, j operators, uh, making a sample average of those across all j operators, then that seems like a plausible uh, estimate of sigma squared reprodu reproduce excuse me, sigma squared repeatability. Then recognizing that reproducibility variance is the difference between R and R variance uh, and repeatability variance, we have uh, an estimate of sigma squared R and R. We have an estimate of sigma squared rep repeatability. And so their difference becomes a plausible estimate of uh, reproducibility variance in this 0, 1 context. That's what to do with information for a single part. It's not completely obvious what to do if one is dealing with multiple parts. Uh, but what we're going to do for IE361, for those of you that are taking this ISU course is to simply average estimates made one part at a time across multiple parts. Uh, presuming that in some sense parts in hand are uh, a random sample of, of parts that will be uh, subjected to this 0-1 in inspection, this go-no-go -go inspection. Uh, if any of this is going to work, uh, it seems pretty obvious that uh, 
m is going to have to be fairly large. m is the number of calls that each operator makes on each part. Um, and uh, also, the and, and m of m of two or three just isn't going to produce uh, informative results. Uh, and for this to work in practice, uh, it it seems that uh, uh, the, it's going to require also a large value of uh, i as well as m, that is a large large number of parts, uh, so that an operator uh, doesn't remember how he's called a particular part. Uh, so here is a, a toy data set that's going to show how we do these uh, calculations in this in this module for this uh, problem. So uh, what we've got here are five hypothetical parts and three hypothetical operators. Uh, we're going to suppose that there were ten calls made by each operator on each part, producing p hat values here, here and here. Now, for every p hat, if we take p hat times 1 minus p hat, we get the numbers to the right of the ones I've just shaded. Uh, and if we then average for a given part, say this number, this number, and this number, then we get that number. For part number 2, I average this, this, and that, I get that, and so on. So averaging these p hat times 1 minus p hats across operators for a given part produces the values in that column. And if I then average them, uh, that's what we've decided to call uh, an estimate of repeatability variance. Continuing to use those same p hat values and uh, I've uh, re-recorded them here. Sorry, I, I recorded their averages here. So this is p hat averaged uh, across operator 1, 2, and 3. Uh, if I then take that average times 1 minus that average, I get the, these values that then average to 0 0.1671. And the difference between uh, the values in this column, that is this bit, and the repeatability variance that we uh, just had in the uh, previous uh, last column, uh, we get this number as an average at the bottom. Uh, we get a sigma squared reproducibility or sigma squared hat for re reproducibility. Uh, the 1.67 1 is here, and the uh, 1.60 here is on uh, slide 7. That means that if I take the uh, uh, sigma squared hat for reproducibility and divide it by sigma squared hat for uh, R and R, uh, that ratio is pretty small. There's only about four and a, four and a quarter percent of variance uh, that's seen in these conforming, non-conforming calls. Uh, that that is clearly attributable to differences in how the operators judge uh, parts. Instead, the bulk of the variance just seems to be attributable to un unavoidable. Uh, basic binomial 
variation, sort of baseline variation. Uh, one gets binomial variation when one has p's that are not close uh, to being either 0 or 1 uh, to, to tend to make the calls uh, consistent. So if, if we had uh, parts that were clearly conforming or clearly non-conforming, uh, that would tend to make the uh, calls consistent uh, and that would make the repeatability variance uh, smaller. Uh, of course, if one does all of these calculations uh, on a standard deviation scale instead of on a variance scale, one might think about comparing the square root of 0 0.0071 to the square root of 0 0.1600. Uh, and that makes those numbers not so strikingly dissimilar as um, this number and this number on the variance scale.